Good evening, everyone. Um, let me introduce myself first. I'm Manju Rajan, uh, editor of Architectural Digest, which launches in India tomorrow, in fact. Um, the very last session of today is titled Good Design is Good Business. And let me plunge right in because we don't have a lot of time. We'll start with a brief introduction of the panelists. Armando Branchini first is executive director of Altagama Foundation, which is a trade body of 74 luxury brands such as Gucci, Bulgari, etc. He is also the president of the European Luxury Alliance, an economist and a professor. Priya Paul, who many of you know, she's actually Padma Shri Priya Paul now, uh, is the chairperson of the Park Hotels. Priya has received numerous awards for the design sensibilities of her properties, including the Excellence in Design Innovation Award from Condinas Traveler, India. To my left is Suzanne Roshan, who most of us know as Bollywood royalty, but she's also an interior designer and a product designer and recently became founder of the Charcoal Project, which is a concept design store based in Bombay. Finally, Jerome Sands, who has been described as an art genius recently. Um, Jerome is the cultural curator of the Meridian Group, who's introduced novel concepts um, in the hotel like the LM100, which aims to bring together creative people of all genres to produce different kinds of interesting experiences. Um, and he's also sort of worked with art. He is the co-founder of the Palais de Tokyo in Paris and the former director of the Yulin Center for Contemporary Art in Beijing. Welcome, all of you. Um, we will start with Armando, who's got a presentation. <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Good design is good business. I would say when it has a strong uh, and innovative cultural content. Uh, in the past, the mission of the artist was to show the beauty in the nature. Today, the mission of a designer uh, is to show the beauty of the industry. This is uh, Michele uh, uh, De Lucchi, <coughs> a, a statement, an Italian architect and uh, 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 the industrial designer. I start from here uh, because uh, following from the theme of this panel, I'd like to start with some figures just to define better uh, what kind of business uh, we are talking about. According to 2011 Altagama Worldwide Markets Monitor, the high-end design furniture worldwide consumption was about 23 a billion US dollars, including uh, living at bedroom, lighting, bathroom, outdoor designer furniture. On top, the sector of Art de la Table accounts for $4.6 billion, same in 2011. The good news is that the uh, 2011 sales have bounced back to the same level as 2000, 2007 before the global financial crisis. Another good news, at least for us Italians, is that more than 60% of this turnover pertains to Italian companies, and the rest is divided between German, French, Swiss, British, and US companies. But uh, what do we mean exactly when you speak about design? The word design has become popular in the last uh, decade, specifically referred to the industrial design, the furniture sector. I have to say that it is thanks to the commercial success of several furniture uh, items produced in the last 50, 60 years, mainly by Italian companies such as Cassina, Floss, Artemide, BAB Italia, and so on, that the term design uh, came to, my, to mean high-end, sophisticated, and beautiful furniture, uh, as the ones that you can see on the screens. Uh, design is a beautiful word, complex and full of meanings. It includes 
most of the elements that uh, make the success of a product in the markets. So it is correct to affirm that in the contemporary world, a good design is mandatory to develop a good business. Uh, today, you found several definitions of the word design. And uh, there is not a generally accepted one. I don't intend to, to bore you going through with all of them, but uh, for today's discussion, I find it interesting to have a, a little bit unusual approach. The word design derives from the Latin de signo, which means about the sign, where sign means at the time drawing and link. Now, the reason why design and all the design icons that are shown here have become so popular is because uh, these products are something more or something else than just good-looking objects with a function. Functionality, you know, is just one aspect of a design product as well as its aesthetic value. What is interesting uh, is that the successful combination of functionality and aesthetics makes a design item a cultural product or even a cult product. And uh, uh, that is true even the, in the case of fashion products, cars, and most of the luxury goods. This is why Fondazione Altagamma and our European Association consider that all these industries are part of the same culture, culture Italian of European or French or British of German or Spain, Spanish of excellence. What do I mean with this? These products are cultural products because they are able to cause changes in the society. A design product is an object loaded with meaning to which one becomes attached, a lived-in product, rather than an indistinguished utilitarian product that we would replace or get rid of uh, as soon as it starts to fail or is technically superseded. The introduction of design products into the market brings a revolution in the culture, in the taste, in the lifestyle. The introduction of design product changes the way our generations think and see the present and the future in design as in decor, in fashion, in food, and in dining. The way we dress, the way we furnish our homes reflects not only uh, our personality, but also the economic, political, and social standing and our self-worth, and most important, our history. Cultural, culture is the biggest explanatory factor in the consumption of design products, and the design furniture sector is probably the one with the highest level of cultural contents. Italian design culture is a combination of heritage, of capability to understand the needs and changes of the society, creativity, innovation in every field, from product design to manufacturing to retail to communication, and also, of course, of fun functionality and aesthetics. It is not something abstract. It is strictly connected to our territory and to the everyday Italian lifestyle as it evolves through times. Italy's strong points in the creativity industry can, can be ascribed also to the experience and legacy of the past with its material culture, architecture, town planning, and transformation of the landscape. In many cases, this past is quite recent. In the early decades of last century, Italian rationalist architecture led to original relationship between project design and uh, manufacturing technology, creating a taste and a culture of design from the teaspoon to the city and forming the background from which modern Italian design has drawn. Designers and entrepreneurs are the two categories that mainly brought about this long period of successes. On one side, designers capable of constantly shifting forward the frontiers of good states, of good design, on the other side, entrepreneurs capable of creating the technical, organizational, and economic means. Capable to convert design into finished products, creative dreams into uh, items with great symbolic values. Capable to manage the intangible aspects of what they have to offer, brand, values, heritage, identities, symbolic content, images, over the decades, the ability to, to manage, manage a relationship with external, internal, creative professionals and workers 
uh, has had a decisive impact on the relationship with the final consumers. Italian design entrepreneurs strongly developed the relations between brand and craftsmanship, as well as the single branded retail. This has enabled many companies to develop significantly at the downstream end of the value chain in the retail distribution area. And the contemporary way of single retail or single branded retailing is something that was created in Italy about 40 years ago. In the contemporary society in which consumption plays such an important role, the luxury good and the design good industry has, have been crucial in shifting the perspective of goods from mere commodities to items able to create and spread <coughs> values. To shape through their symbolic and, and immaterial asset the identity of a community, no matter how local or global it can be. The differentiation among culture is not determined by the way people satisfy their basic needs, but by the way they are able to fulfill their dreams to fill their everyday routine with those goods and experiences that make life worth living. That has, uh, has always been the past and still is uh, true for art, literature, poetry, cuisine, craftsmanship, and it is true for those design goods uh, that embody strong material values. The push to innovation is something organic to the creation of a good design product. Creativity and innovation are at the heart of this business. The industry and our brands are inspired by our culture, art, heritage to create unique design, products, retail environment, and communication. <clears throat> as well as finding inspiration, our luxury brands and products inspire creativity and innovation in a virtuous circle. Uh, creativity and innovation is intrinsic in all the business through strategies and company vision in cutting edge uh, design and products, in presentation, communication and customer engagement, and in pioneering technological innovation. Design and fashion businesses have people within their companies who are solely responsible for their creative direction or their brands. Few businesses outside the design and fashion sector have creative directors, probably just uh, communication and publishing, as our moderator is part of. Um, in, uh, uh, and uh, in those business models, those creative directors are as important to the companies as the CEOs. Uh, given the trend break in innovative design and manufacturing technique from the luxury and design industry, this product become part of the cultural heritage, living beyond the, their time in fashion and furniture and becoming iconic pieces of art and culture. Museums such as the MoMA in New York, represented here by the design curator Paolo Antonelli, Vittorio and Albert in London, Triennale in Milan, have collection and stage exhibition on the work of designers. In conclusion, uh, we may say that good business is deeply connected with good design. In a sentence, we have good design when this arises uh, 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 from culture and influences cultural changes in the society. Thank you. Thank you, Armando. That was very comprehensive. Um, Priya, let's start with you. Good design is good business. When you repositioned um, your hotels, you went down the path of calling them design hotels. Why did you do that and how has it paid off in the last years since that you've done it? Almost 22. Um, we started this process as, as almost 22 years it's, um, ago. It was uh, an old company. We had three hotels in the early 90s. And um, I really looked at design as a way to differentiate this. Uh, it was really a small company. Still is small, but we uh, have grown. Um, so I, my whole thought was, okay, how could we be relevant? How could we, um, you know, I really wanted to make hotels in a, in, a, in a different way. And I could see in the 90s, and maybe because I was not a hotelier, uh, that I could create them in a, in a, in a special manner, uh, a way that uh, maybe satisfied my own creative 
um, urge. And I felt that I could work with uh, different people from across the world and in India to translate my uh, vision into reality. So um, I felt, and I still do feel, that uh, design has been it's an integral part of the park hotels. And it's not just the product. I mean, you'll see some slides going on. It's, of course, it's a product. But it's also getting uh, design and innovation into the kind of the DNA of our people. So it's also looking at designing services, designing the whole back end that goes and making um, not just individual hotels, but individual people that deal with uh, services at the hotel. Do you find that your customers have also are coming to you specifically because it is a design hotel? Yes. I think in the beginning when we started in the 90s, it was very difficult to explain to people what is a design hotel, what is a boutique hotel, or whatever terminology you want to use. And I think over the, uh, you know, it took us maybe about seven to ten years to really train people to, to understand what it meant and understand that it was, uh, it was cool to be different. And um, I think it's paid off and I think people recognize that we, we have that niche and we, uh, we have about now 12 hotels across India and growing, so it's fun. Doing well. Jerome, um, keeping with the hospitality genre, at Le Meridian there has been a lot of different um, you know, projects that look at involving art and culture as part of the hospitality experience, including having a signature scent for the hotel, of uh, the key cards are specially designed, etc. Do you find that these sort of aesthetic experiences make a big difference to the customer? Are they demanding for it? Have you, I mean, have you seen a significant difference because of these changes? This is a very interesting question. Le Meridian understood that it's not enough to have as a company social responsibility. We are at a time like making business is not enough. What we need to bring is a <coughs> cultural responsibility. No one else than companies, beside of local authorities, companies has a true responsibility. And I joined Le Meridian not to be a decorator. This is not my job. I joined Le Meridian because they had this obsession to bring or to give or to offer to their guests something else as a traditional hotel industry provide to everyone. If you look at most of the hotels nowadays, they all, all say almost the same thing. Fantastic spa, fantastic this, fantastic that. But at the end of the day, what is given to any of the customer in general? We want that anyone comes in our Le Meridian Hotel live with an experience that you learn from a very simple gesture, from drinking your coffee or just taking your breakfast or entering to a hotel, something may happen to you and where you can live with maybe a new pair of eyes. The problem with any <coughs> issue today is very interesting. What means good design? How can you measure design? I just want to remind to all the experts here in the room that one of the historical designer, Mr. Dieter Rams, in the early 80s, defined 10 some kind of commandments saying what would be good design. And I'm going to read it very shortly to you <laughs> as something very interesting for our thought. The 10 commandments was to be good design, to be innovative, useful product, aesthetic meaning sober, product understandable by anyone, it's like work of art. The art has to be understood and given to everyone. It has to be, of course, honest, long-lasting, toros down to the last detail, environment-friendly, and at the end of the day, as little design as possible, meaning minimal, meaning less <laughs> is more. We are living at a time where many people give you too many for, at the end, nothing. The real good design is when there is a message. The message has to be in a bottle. Thank you, Jerome. Moving from the hotel to the home. Suzanne, you've been an interior designer for 10 years. You've seen a lot of changes in the way people curate their homes. What are the kind of changes that you've seen in your clients? And are they more design conscious now, do you find? 
to it. Thank you. I believe that um, I have seen a growth. I have seen that there is a there is a human nature to have a better lifestyle, to have a better experience, whether it is in a hotel, whether it is in your own home, whether <clears throat> you want to buy a product whether you want to possess a handbag, whatever it is, there is a constant growth. There is you know, a desire to want a better lifestyle. And through that, I think that design is just a tool. It, it provides you with a constant, um, you know, a constant solution to improve on what is already there and what we can do to better that what already exists. So it, it's, um, it's with that, within, within the world of interiors, I, I believe that we are all here to constantly challenge the consumer, constantly make the consumers look beyond the box, look out you know, uh, uh, sideways, not straight forward, and kind of like uh, give them a desire and, and give them some sort of like, um, uh, it's like a seduction to make them believe that this is more than just a product, this is a lifestyle and this is a dream that you're trying to sell them, you know? So I, I think that design uh, transcends to good business, but the more important thing would be is to focus from, from your heart to make that design unique, to make that design simple and workable, and definitely to let, if you, if you put in that, eventually business follows. That's what I believe. Thank you. Talking about simplicity of design and also making design relevant um, locally, have you also found that over the years that people, their aesthetics have become more international or that they're going back to wanting more Indian influences in their home? The world is, um, is a playground. And I think that every artist from each country um, you know, get some sort of inspiration from everywhere around, and it's like a, you know, it's like an eclectic mix. So the the, the people, the clients, or the people that I deal with, they, uh, I mean, India is so rich in culture, and it's so diverse, and you have like the most beautiful uh, architecture and you know art forms, and and I think that. It's a mixture, it's a fusion. They pick some from here, then they, they you know, they, there's a whole, you know, strong hist uh, European history that we all just completely depend on for every design point of view. There is, so it's a culmination. It's a, it's a mixture of most things put together. And yes, the, the Indian, um, you know, the Indian consumer is more aware because there is a, a sense of, um, you know, there is a sense of, um, more in you know they're uh, traveling and they're they're kind of like understanding and they're absorbing so they've become like sponge and they know what is a good product and what is not so you cannot fool them <laughs> thank you armando you gave us the presentation on italian design and italy of course is is legendary in having um, created beautiful practical products do you believe that there are probably learnings that for India, from the kind of climate that Italy had um, to have the kind of progress in design that it made during the 20th century, do you think there's something that we can learn in India from Italy? <clears throat> Frankly speaking, I believe that uh, uh, the business model that was created in Italy 50, 60 years ago is still good, not, not just for Italy, but can, good, can be good also for India. As I mentioned, there are two, two main categories that are at the very, the two pillars for the development of the, this industry. One, from one side, you need to have creative designers. On the other side, you have to create, to have entrepreneurs that have the financial, cultural, and organizational ability to support uh, and to, to bet also on, on, on these designers. And, uh, uh, one of the reasons why uh, m m the top designer of the world, whatever nationality, uh, work with Italian entrepreneurs, is that uh, Mr. Pakale from India, or Mr. Singh, uh, before finding uh, Capellini in Italy or uh, Driade in Italy, they tried to work with uh, Indian entrepreneurs and they didn't find it. But the same was uh, before finding uh, Driaden Cartel 
Uh, also, Philip Stark tried to do something with French manufacturers. He, 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 he didn't find anybody, but the same was Ron Arad. After moving from Israel to London, he started with his all, all, all small craftsmanship, and to avoid bankruptcy, he closed it and started working with cartel. So the point is, if you have creative designer, and luckily India has created good schools, good institutions, good uh, um, uh, workshops, uh, from where a number of creative designers in fashion, and in particularly in furniture and design, come out. The point is, you need to have entrepreneurs that are w willing to bet, and not just to sell to the domestic market, but to sell worldwide. Priya, you're an entrepreneur <laughs> that, um, who has are you willing? <laughs> bet very big on design. Um, but as an entrepreneur who has bet on design, what are the challenges that you have faced? I mean, you mentioned that it was difficult at one point to explain to people what a design hotel even means. Um, and of course, your business is flourishing. But what are really the problems that you have faced and still face in terms of yeah. your investment? <laughs> Huge investment. Um, I think you're, you're right. Obviously, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when these designers came to Indian manufacturers or companies, I think the understanding was limited. Let's say the market for Indian produced design goods was also limited. Uh, and maybe the technologies were not there, whether, you know, cartel works with a lot of plastics and things like that, which you don't have in India. Um, and I think the, the challenge really in India is, you know, I, I mean, I struggled a lot in the 90s to find the right product designers and the right products available at, you know, with good finishes. And I think, you know, in a hotel, in a luxury environment, you're looking for not just some craft item that's, uh, you know, made with, of course, with your hands, but not well made. So there's, there's that struggle, and I think there are people who are now working, um, you know, uh, whether it's, you know, NID, NIFT, or other designers working with craftspeople to work on craft design. Um, we've integrated that into a lot of our hotels, but there's a lot of work that we need to do with the artisan, with, uh, with these people, and we handhold a lot of that process. I mean, you know, in our Hyderabad hotel, we've worked with uh, many craftspeople, but it's a question of sitting with them, ideating, taking the design further, and making them see that. So that's the craft part. I think on um, product design, which is furniture, lighting, um, other things, it's just about beginning to happen in India. And I think there are people now buying design, there are design stores, which not just sell uh, international branded uh, stuff, but things that are made by Indian designers. And I think that's important, and it's at all price levels. And that's what's important, as people see more things, they uh, see through all the various interior magazines, how that's used in their home. And for me, I think, um, I, I think people need to be proud of buying those Indian-made uh, luxury goods, because they are handcrafted, they're handmade, or industrial-made. People should appreciate Indian design, whether it's the craft or anything. So I think that's the big challenge. And that's something that magazines such as yours, I hope, will showcase more of Indian design made in India, made by Indians, for Indians, for the way we live. It's very easy for me to buy hundreds of designers, and I, all those Italian companies are represented in our hotels, but I would love to see a beautifully made Indian light. I don't have to want to go to Italy or China all the time. So that's my big challenge. Suzanne, your stores got a mixture of Indian as well as international products um, at various price points. But at dealing with the Indian consumer on a one-to-one -one basis, has it been difficult for you to convince people why something that someone could knock off with their carpenter, which a lot of people do, um, should actually be bought at your store for X amount of money? I mean, has it been difficult to convince people to, to you know, come and buy? Honestly, I think that, um, you know, a design, when you design a product or when you have a, a, a knockoff, like you say, a knockoff is a knockoff. It's not the original. And the original is, is made with a whole load of details, details in every little inch of that piece. And, uh, you know, the product designer or the product itself will show you the difference. So when a person comes to my store and they, they, they can't even honestly feel that they want to make that because they know that they can't. So the thing is that they, they don't mind spending that 
extra, um, you know, whatever that it takes to for them to possess it because it's like having a better product. It's like having a better quality, of, you know, product that is standing for something that is more real than just, you know, something that you are quite, kind of like trying to do like in a crafts, craftsman's way. So I haven't, I've been fortunate enough to experience that there is a thirst, there is a, like a, like a, you know, the desire to possess a better product. They don't want to compromise. Even if they can't afford it, they wait and they, they come back and they collect money to get it. And I've noticed that. And that's a great sign. That's a super sign for the economy, for our industry as interiors. And I just think that we, we've just started off and I know that there is a long way to go ahead. And that's why you're expanding the business. <laughs> um, Jerome, going back to hospitality and challenges, I mean, you, the Meridian work, you know, operates in various countries around the world. Um, when you're sort of applying some of, the, some of the new ideas that you've implemented in various hotels, do you find that there is a difference between what you can do and the reactions that you get perhaps doing something in Europe versus in India? from the consumer? By chance, by chance, the world has changed. I don't see that much difference, <laughs> in fact. I'm living between Paris and Beijing. To be honest with you, many people look at me as a French and looking at Paris as something super vibrant. I feel Beijing is beyond vibrant. So, <laughs> I am very excited to live there and to share my life between China and the rest of the world because I think it's exactly like here where everything is going on. We have, I'm living there and I have uh, co-founded a place, an institution there, and it's very successful, but I was there mostly to help Chinese, as you said before, to invent a place, <coughs> not as a copy of an old institution, a model that, does, that exists everywhere, that everybody cut, copy and paste for the last 30 years, but to invent something for China with Chinese and to be copied by the rest of the world. And we are very happy to see that all my colleagues, and many of them American, European, went to China, and they, they, they thought they would succeed to, to make their own institutions. They, most of them failed for many different reasons, political, economical, and others. But they all looked at us, and now they wonder how could we have succeeded with all those new emerging energies. This is the same here. You know, most of the friends I have there, architect, designer, now many brands, Italian, German, French, now start to ask them to, to propose projects. They understand that the world has shifted and the talents are today in all those emerging countries. You are part of that. India obviously is kicking the world. I was just saying before in an interview <coughs> that who have imagined 10, 20 years ago that Subodh Gupta would be one of the leading international artists right behind some of the important artists from Western world like Damien Hirst, Jeff Koons and others. Who could imagine that Tsai Kuo Chiang, Chinese artist, would have in his show at the Guggenheim, would have the biggest audience ever since Henri Matisse exhibition. So he was having a far bigger audience than any American artist, any European artist, historical ones, in that historical institution. What I'm saying through this is I fully agree with you, but time is not tomorrow, time is now. For India, for China, Latin America, Arab countries, this is the new world. The new world is taking over the position. We have now, we as foreigners, we as Western, to learn from you what to do for tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Durham. <coughs> Well, we have about five minutes left. I'd like to open the floor up to any questions, if anyone has any. No? Sorry. What is a cultural advisor for a hotel chain? What do, you do? what do you do? Well, my role is uh, 
is very specific. I'm not, as I said, a decorator. I'm not uh, working with Le Meridian to say to the 110 properties, this is a good work, or this is a bad work, or this is a mediocre work. You could do, have all the works on the wall. This is not my job. I'm not here to work with, for design as well. I was hired to help the brand in general, to reinvent the vocabulary of the brand and to to locate for them or to tell them this is interesting project. This is this person within our territory. This territory is inventing something new that would be very exciting for us. So, for example, I was and very happy to do this for Le Meridian, inventing the new scent for the brand with some of the amazing, and I'm sorry, they are French and been living in New York, and but they are very amazing uh, creative people. They are Le Labo, and they are reinventing the art of fragrance, <coughs> meaning no more ready-to-wear perfume, but something, some kind of haute couture, freshly squeezed for you, special fragrance. And we made for, with them something very homey, something very special that would be one of the only elements that would be shared by all the 110 properties around the world. Something as a Proustian thing. When you enter, like when you push the door of the house, the smell is a key thing, as you know, within your hotel, I was very... Well, so, this is, my role has been to help to find, to develop, for example, the music uh, within the... Uh, we, together with a composer, for the last five years, we have done a 24-hour track, which will somehow re reinvent what has been done for the last 10 years. Everybody was doing the lounge music. Now it's over. It's... Uh, you know, major hotel uh, chain has done that. They have done their CDs. It has been the last 10 years. Now it's over. Something new has to come out. So my role is to say and to come to every details, we could do this. Or they come to me and say, what can we do with that level? I am interested to be challenged. So my role is within all those things and to work with a chef, to work with designers, with architects, with a fashion designer, with visual artists, of course. With visual artists, what I have done was, and was very unique, to try to reverse the traditional perspective you have, we have with artworks. Normally what we do, I look at a sculpture, we can go around, or I go at painting, it's very frontal, very uh, traditional. What we did, we understood that 110 property has glass windows. And we proposed to artists to make specific works for those windows to go through. So you are all of a sudden going through the mirror. It may remind you something like a Lewis Carolian thing. And then you are part of the picture. You are not just uh, outside of it. You are in, out, in, you play with it. So everything we produce, and I do with them, is to invent new stories we, where the guests are not extras, and not, you know, uh, but they are part of it. So not interactive, I don't like the word interactive, which is uh, not very interesting, but you are part of it. You can learn out of it. For example, what I did as well, something, and I will stop with that, sorry, <laughs> is I invented with them to use a plastic key card that we have now, unfortunately, everywhere all over the world. This key card now become, with the Meridian, a collectible item. Each, what, one or two times a year, we ask artists to customize them, to make a set of four, six different cards that you can throw, you can keep, if you are smart, and one after one is different collection. This card, of course, open very, very banal. It's a very banal thing, your door, but it's not enough. We wanted that this card, like a Meridian, will open something else, a unique cultural experience within the city. So everywhere that where the Meridian is located, this key card open an, an institution, cultural institution, freely for every guest. We are not afraid to go out of the box and to say outside, you can learn and have a unique experience that may change your life or may change your perspective on the world. So this card is a passport for an, an outside experience, a cultural one Super. in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Are there any other questions? 
what I would like to ask you is, uh, in a hotel like Le Meridian and Park Hotel, you don't uh, really give an option to the consumer. It's an exhibition of design. So that is good business as such because it is something that you think is good and it is exhibited. Now, as it comes to home, uh, for a product designer or an interior designer, when you're working with the client, it's a little difficult to make the client or the consumer understand what good design as such will make them feel better and what they want. There's a huge difference. So how would you try to address that issue as to tell the consumer, okay, this is what I think is right. It'll save you energy, it'll save you cost. But what you want is not gonna look good after some time. It's not gonna go, it's not gonna be harmonious, you know. So, so you want to know from the Suzanne? home design perspective? Well, I'm trying to, like, yeah, basically. So then, yes. See, honestly, when you meet with your client and you, uh, there, you have to study them, you have to understand their psychology, you have to spend time with them and see what their wants are as a family, as an individual. And based on that, you can suggest for them or you can design for them. And um, it, is, it, is, it is not something that is a sale ta tactic. It is, that's their lifestyle for them. Yes, I understand what you're saying. So you have to give them that importance. That's why at a concept store, we, we do that. We try to give that importance to the client to make them feel special enough that this is completely done for them. And um, we, we like to succeed in that, and that's, uh, that's why I think conceptual interior design for homes is very important rather than just you know, trying to sell a whole load of furniture. Yeah. I think that that's goes even for what, yeah. what I do. I mean, I think um, when you work with designers, it's, you know, I think I'm the curator in many ways. It's, you know, I'm the client, and I'm looking at a whole designer's body of work or design solutions that they're giving me. So it's my role to, to interact with the designer and say, okay, fine, this is what's, uh, you know, what I, what I get, and this is what will actually achieve what, what our objectives are, and I think, Part of our role as clients is also editing um, what the design should be, finally. Actually, uh, so taking off... you feel <coughs> like they're at home, even in a hotel, you feel like even... I think that's very important because I think they have so much of passion in what they're doing, Jerome and the pre prayer, that they make the person... I think that there is a passion in uh, Jerome and Priya to make their uh, client feel like it's not a hotel. This is your home. Even if you're just going to be here temporarily, this is your home. So we want this to be an experience for you, and that's why you want to come back and you don't want to go anywhere else. So I think that it, it is important in every aspect of design to make the consumer feel that, and never to let them feel like you're just wanting to do this as a business. I would add that there is nothing worse, even as anyone in the room here, as a total look. Yes. I hate it. I hate so much people who are wearing things that doesn't fit them. I hate people or houses, hotels, museums, which has no smell. If I go to your house, I want to have your personality, as you said yes. here before. There is nothing worse than this terrorist architect or designer who are imposing everything to anyone. <laughs> there is a very interesting <laughs> film. Yes, there is a very interesting film director who said, I would like one day that we force the designer or architect to live within their, their invention to understand what they did. <laughs> That's clear. bad design. <laughs> well, on that note, our time is up. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone on the panel. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen.